Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Bitwig and in today's video, we're going to learn how to make a simple but nice sounding course inside the effects grid. And for this example, I'm going to be using Repro 5. You can use whatever synth you want or whatever audio source you want to run through this course. So here at an init preset, we have two saw waves. And let's spice this up just a little bit, adding some more release here to the amp. Maybe some cutoff modulation here with the envelope. Okay, that should be fine for now. So if we close this guy out and then we take a look here so we can turn this guy on and take a listen to the course. And we can even make it a little bit nicer if we'd like to. So we can add a little bit of reverb and then maybe a little bit of delay. Okay, so let's remove these for now. Let's get into this course and see what's happening. So if we open this guy up, it's really not too complicated, but let's walk through it anyway. So basically what we have, we have four LFOs. We have some stereo splitting and merging happening, delaying those signals, summing them back up together, and then sending them through the output with an attenuate knob just in case. So basically our audio comes in and we have a left and a right channel. So this guy over here is gonna be our stereo splitting. So we wanna split this signal into left and right. So this is exactly what we're doing. And a, a first, the main copy or the main signal is just going to a stereo merge and then going or getting summed, which goes right to the output. So we basically have a direct path of our direct signal coming in and going out unaffected. That's kind of the first step. The next one is, is that we want to split this left channel into two different delays. Now, this is a stereo chorus, as you can see. That's why there's two LFOs up here, two down here, two delays here, and two delays here, and they're getting fed from left and right. So let's focus on the left side first because the right's basically the same. So we go to this splitting module, and a copy of our left channel is first going to go into this delay. And right now, this is set at 22 milliseconds, and then it goes over here, and then it goes over here to get summed again, and then basically sums for the whole thing. Now, the interesting part, which makes this whole work, is how we move these delays. Now, that's why we have these LFOs. So if we click on this first one up here, we can hover our mouse, we can see, okay, so this one is moving this delay just by a little bit, and we're going at 0.25 hertz. Now, if we zoom in really close to this guy, and we play it, we can see a little bit of that motion kind of going on there. Now that's kind of that concept and the same thing as well. So if we go to this next LFO and we have our mouse over here, we can see that this one is now slowly moving this delay, which is at 20 milliseconds. So the same thing here on the left-hand side is gonna work for the right-hand side. Now, we might think, okay, how do we want to change this thing? How do we want to make this thing different? So. By doing that, we have to think, okay, so what exactly is happening in the course? We have a direct signal, but we also have copies of their signal that are getting delayed, and that delay is getting moved by an LFO. So that's changing over time, kind of going back and forth. It's getting delayed for a longer time, a shorter time, and that motion is what gives us this sound. Now, what we can do, there's a couple parameters that we can change to change the sound of our chorus. So one of those being the speed of our LFO. So here's 0.25 and this one is 0.28. So these LFOs are going almost at a similar speed, but just a little bit different to have a slightly different sound. And if you notice, this first one here is a sine wave versus this one here is a triangle wave. And I kind of did something similar down here, but you know, these are going to be inverted. So that's other things that you can think about where you can change the, uh, the phase or the polarity to 180 degrees. And these two are also kind of interesting where the first one here, this this uh, this sine wave is going at 0.25. You find the other sine wave and that's 0.25. We look at this triangle wave, that's 0.28. And this one also is 0.28. So that's some of the parameters you can start changing if you'd like to. Also, you could change how much of that modulation that you would like. So if we selected this LFO, we're doing, what is this, like 0 0.035 here on this, uh, first delay knob right here. So depending on how much of that modulation we want to give to the delay from our LFO, that's gonna change our sound. 
And also, even in this delay module itself, this is hard coded here at 22 milliseconds, although we're changing this via the LFO. So you can change this main number here if you'd like to. That's something to do as well. Now, for these, they're pretty much the same where we have a delay that's 20 milliseconds and another delay that's 22. And then here we have 20 and then 22. So these don't necessarily have to mirror each other. Feel free to experiment, maybe make one 25, maybe make one 18 or something like that. And you can also add more of these voices as well. We can do this again. We can add another delay, another um, another stereo merger, and then another summing, and then just keep dragging outputs here to another one and just add more voices that way to really thicken it up. So that's one thing you can do as well. And they're all getting summed once again, right? So this right channel is getting summed and that's going summed back here and then going over here to our output. And it's nice to have an attenuate knob here just in case because you're adding more signal to our signal, right, with the copies. So it's possible it can get louder. So it's nice to have a uh, an attenuate knob there. So what can we do to make this a little bit more controllable? So what you could do is you can add some macros. So we can click this guy here. Let's type in macro. So you can get this macro, so this knob here, and you can adjust the different delay times. So let's say we want to, instead of hard coding this at 22, we can give a little bit of boost right here, maybe on this guy here. I guess maybe we can do all of them. You could do with the exact same values. It's up to you. This is kind of just looking at what you can do. And then you can kind of move these around so you can kind of decide if you want the, uh, the extra voices to be delayed a little bit longer and then have the LFO move based on that new value. So if we did something kind of crazy here, let's add a huge value, something like that. It's just going to be kind of weird, but just so you kind of get it. So there's that kind of sound and that kind of sound. So you could do that, changing these values. You could have another macro that changes the actual speed of the LFOs. I mean, there's a lot of different stuff you can do. You can maybe have a macro that controls the attenuate knob. I mean, there's all sorts of things, but that's kind of the concept behind this. This is like the building blocks of how are we gonna set up a stereo chorus in what certain way and how can we control it? So I definitely recommend for you to try this out and see what you think because it's a lot of fun just to add a module, create your own effects, make it exactly how you want it to be made. And then you can go and kind of add things to that. You know, this is splitting the voices into two different channels. So technically, if we're looking at this, it's a stereo chorus and we have additional voices. So we have two for the left and two for the right. So yeah, there you go. Hopefully you learned something. Definitely try this out. It's a lot of fun to do and maybe add stuff after the chorus or something like that who knows it's it's the grid you can do whatever it is you want to do it's a lot of fun so hopefully you learned something try this out it's a lot of fun and we'll see you in the next video